Welcome, I'm Robert Ridpath, founder of Health Synergy and author of Belly Fat and Stress Reduction. In this video, we're going to go over something really exciting. It's called the cephalic response. And we're going to take a deep dive at this because this is going to change so many things in your life. It's going to change your energy levels uh, relating to fatigue. It's going to impact your weight issues. It's going to impact your mood and ultimately your healthy aging. So I'm going to jump into the computer. We're going to look at some slides. And by the end of this, you're going to feel much more empowered about what you can do daily at each meal throughout your day to control your cravings, uh, optimize your metabolism and your biochemistry so you can lose weight, feel great. All right, let's go take a look. So let's do a quick review of the first video in this series because this is key to really understanding. When we have normal intake of uh, sweet products and glucose into the body, the body releases a normal amount of insulin and our blood sugar rises and then it's brought down steadily, slowly to a steady state. However, we talked about in imbalances of blood sugar, there can be a, uh, and eat those sugar spiking foods that can cause hyperglycemia or high blood sugar. And that causes a, a ex excessive release of insulin. We call that hyperinsulinemia. And that can contribute to the blood sugar not going down to normal levels, but really low levels that we call hypoglycemia. And that creates mood swings, sugar cravings, uh, brain fog, the shakes, and so on. And then we saw how insulin and blood sugar are related and how blood sugar dries up insulin and poor uh, blood sugar management leads to insulin disruption that leads to blood sugar problems and round and round it goes. And we also saw that there are some key contributors to poor blood sugar management and the area we we're talking a lot about was chronic stress and there are other key ones as well. And then we saw how Poor blood sugar control, the elevated glucose, has these ramifications on the body. Everything from promoting cancer growth, causing glycosylated hemoglobin to go up, and that creates inflammation. How it spills over into the nervous tissue, the brain, and creates inflammation. And how it promotes the increase in elevated insulin, which in turn promotes fat storage. So we saw how this elevated insulin promotes fat storage. How it drives four key types of cancers how it elevates cholesterol, how it elevates blood pressure through sodium retention in the kidney, and how it affects hormone imbalances and creates estrogen dominance in women and um, estrogen dominance and low testosterone in men and the associated issues with that. And ultimately, all of this leads to low energy. And we don't function right. We can't make it through our days and it takes the joy and the juice out of our life. So we looked at how we're going to balance this. So in this video, we're going to look at the cephalic phase insulin response and understand why it promotes fat storage and prevents you from mobilizing and burning fat and some other negative sequences it has as well. So I want you to use your imagination for a little while. Remember when you've walked into a kitchen or a restaurant or a food court and you smell that homemade bread? or that yummy food cooking, and your mouth starts watering, right? We've all had that, and that's a physical response to the smell that you get. Now, if I asked you to use your imagination and in visualize, and use your imagination, visualize something like a chocolate cake. Close your eyes with this one. So you're visualizing a chocolate cake in those commercials, and they're cutting the knife through it, and it's all springy, and in the middle layer, maybe there's a uh, more raspberries or uh, other chocolate and the icing, you can see them spreading it with the knife. Like, I'm starting to salivate already. But you can see how your imagination can initiate uh, the digestive response, right? You start salivating. Now, let's take this a step further. Say you put something sweet in your mouth. Do you think that would initiate some sort of response? Absolutely. And if you guess that the digestive process gets turned on, you're right. And what happens is when the tongue senses the sweetness, a signal sent to the brain, and that causes the, the brain sends a signal to release insulin. Because as you remember, insulin is the hormone that takes blood sugar and puts it into the tissues and stores it and keeps your blood sugar level. And that's a good thing. But the problem is with the high insulin is it prevents the body from burning fat. It's a storage hormone. So. What else? Why does this all happen? Well, 
evolutionary, simple sugars have been relatively rare in our diets. And when the body, when we came across things like honey, cane sugar, maybe some, uh, some of the fruits that were high, higher and sweeter in sugars, uh, the body developed a system, a methodology, to take this quick energy and store it as fat for later use because we never knew where our next meal was going to be coming from. And this has been a really good evolutionary adaptation. However, in the modern society, maybe the diet and the environment are mis matched. And so we may have a mismatch here and this is creating a bit of a problem. So what is the cephalic fat spiral? Well, when we get that sweet taste on the tongue, uh, the brain senses it, releases insulin, and that promotes glycogen storage and fat storage. And so this triggers this biochemical physiological response that also stops the uh, body from taking protein and mobilizing fat and using it for energy and it says let's store energy because that's what this thing does. So it causes the release of hormones including insulin which drives this process and insulin is a fat storage hormone and it inhibits fat mobilization. I've said that many times but it's really key in this whole discussion. So now let's take a look in the last kind of maybe 30 years or so, 40 years, there's something called artificial sweeteners. They don't have any calories, and when we take them in, the tongue senses sweetness. And what's really interesting is there are studies showing that people who consume uh, drinks or foods with these sweeteners actually tend up, end up gaining weight. How is this working? Well, let's take a look at kind of what's going on in the body. As you learned, when the tongue senses the sweetness, the cephalic response happens, the brain senses it, sends down the signal of insulin, and that drives down blood sugar. And if there's no food or no energy that actually comes in, the body says, well, I need some real food there, buddy, so you better start eating some food. So it creates what are called hyperurges or sugar cravings. It also causes us to overeat or over drink more of these sweet tasting drinks, beverages that we're having. And then this cascade repeats itself. But there's something else that goes on here as well, something a little deeper. And it's called reactive hypoglycemia. And we talked about this in the earlier video as well. All the insulin that's produced tells the body fat to store, store, store. And it drives blood glucose levels, and I'm using my hands, from a normal level down and that glucose is taken up into the tissues, so now what happens, it creates a state in the body where the blood sugar is low or hypoglycemic. So this is reactive hypoglycemia. And this is key to understand for weight loss and weight gain. So let's take a look at a picture. So in the cephalic phase insulin response, on my graph you can see time versus blood sugar levels. And we talked about when artificial sweeteners are in ingested and the tongue senses them, it promotes insulin release. And our uh, gray area, that was our normal glucose response. But now, because of the insulin release, it creates a reactive hypoglycemic state. This is low blood sugar. And here, fat storage is promoted because of the insulin, and fat mobilization and utilization is inhibited. So ultimately, you can't store, you store fat, and you can't burn it. And this is exactly opposite to what most people want to do. And so if we start analyzing and looking at our diets and we look at these artificial sweeteners, this becomes really important that we maybe start taking them out of our diet. So the energy demands aren't being met, the body generates strong cravings for sweets and high glycemic foods, and this can last for a couple hours. So you're just hungry over and over. The brain's instructed the body to produce insulin to drive that sugar that should be coming in into the tissues, but it doesn't happen. So this is called the cephalic phase insulin response. And it can derail and prevent you from losing weight and burning fat. So let's take a look at it in a diagram. The artificial sweeteners cause a elevated insulin response that causes fat storage and inhibits fat mobilization. That can also contribute to a reactive hypoglycemic state, low blood sugar, that creates sugar cravings and so on. And also, your energy goes down. You have no energy. 
And so what do you do? You want to eat more and you have these sugar cravings, so you overeat. And ultimately, if you're having this sugar water or these artificial sweeteners, this process is driven forward and it repeats. So you can't control yourself and you think, man, I got no willpower. It's not your willpower. It's that a deep biochemical physiological process is controlling it, controlling you, and you have to take back control. So what can we do to prevent this? Well, obviously, stop ingesting anything that triggers this response. So stop drinking those diet drinks, the flavored water, and the drinks that don't contain any carbohydrate. You want to stay away from some of the sugary drinks as well, like maltodextrin and highly sweetened foods or beverages. Also, a lot of people are using protein powders these days. It could be whey, soy, rice, hemp, or whatever. But they aren't always the best tasting, so the companies add artificial sweeteners. Ah, can you see where this is going? You're trying to do the right thing and have a smoothie or whatnot, but you're adding this protein powder with these artificial sweeteners, and it creates this response. Another thing you can do, and I've, I do this, and I'm trying to prevent myself, but don't put uh, some of these fruits into your shakes and pulverize them. Eat them, don't drink them. And also avoid the highly sweetened foods, the gly high glycemic foods. We've talked about that. Avoid cereals and switch from things that are high glycemic index, like some of the bananas and watermelons, to low glycemic berries. And also for breakfast, shift over to eating whole cooked oatmeal instead of instant oatmeal. They grind it up so it's higher glycemic index and they add sugar to it. It's not a good thing. And also a key thing, Try and have mixed meals of protein, carbohydrate, and fat with additional fibers and phytonutrients. And with your protein, carbs, and fats, try and target that 40% carb, 30% protein, 30% fat. I've actually even made a video on this on how to make power shakes. And this is really key. When you start eating like this, there's something called the uh, two-meal effect. So if you, you've heard probably that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, right? So you know that. So when you have a good healthy breakfast, protein, carbs, fats, phytonutrients, fibers, um, that stabilizes your blood sugar. But it also in your brain and in your body, it alters your biochemistry, your neurology. And so the next time you go to eat, you tend to make better food choices. Now this is really paramount because if you have a poor, low quality breakfast, and in this case I mean high glycemic index, artificial sweeteners, things like that, the next time you go to eat, your brain chemistry's changed. You make different decisions. You don't even realize it. So this happens actually not just for the next meal, but the meal after that. So we call this the two meal effect. So let's go back big picture. If you're trying to uh, lose weight, you have to teach your body that there's good nutrients coming in. So if you have a healthy breakfast, protein, carbs, fats, fibers, that's gonna set you up to win for the rest of the day, the next two meals. This is something so simple to act on. So I have a call to action for you now. All right, you've just learned some amazing material. Everything from sugar intake, blood sugar, to insulin management, to the cephalic phase, insulin response, to the cephalic fat cycle. You've learned a lot, you've invested your time, and I want you to get a return on your investment. So I'm gonna challenge you and ask, what action steps are you going to take? Are you going to cut out artificial sweeteners? Are you going to cut out those sugared waters? Are you going to start adding more protein and fat and phytonutrients and fiber to your carbohydrates so you have those mixed meals at 40, 30, 30? So what action steps are you going to take? If you want more training like this, you can go to healthsynergy.ca and check out all our free resources and see if you like our other training and so on. And in this series, I'm going to continue on and do a little bit more on insulin and then its impact on Alzheimer's disease. Because as you're aware, this blood sugar, this insulin, and Alzheimer's, they're all on the same continuum. So I'm going to do a video training for you on Alzheimer's disease because one of the biggest fears most people have about getting older, it's not dying, it's losing their marbles and being a burden on the family. So we've got to address this. So I'm Robert Ridpath. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.